Hello, my dear CA intermediate students who are appearing for May 24 and November 24 in new syllabus. Welcome to the regular batch on GST. And my name is Tarun Raj. I am your GST faculty. I have been taking classes on indirect taxes for last 12 to 13 years. And I am taking classes for CA, CMA, intermediate and final students. So first of all, thank you for choosing me as your faculty for indirect taxes at CA intermediate level and uh, definitely I will ensure you that you will get the best knowledge on the subject indirect taxes so that you will be able to cope up with the exam as well as post exam articleship and thereafter that will be a, a stone or a step for the purpose of you know final because the curriculum is made in such a way that the few chapters which are fundamental in GST is given at intermediate level and it's advanced topics whereas the advanced areas etc are given at CA final level. So when you come to CA final level if you are not having good command over GST at intermediate level you will be finding it difficult at CA final level. Also, now the importance is given by CA Institute more and more for three papers that is accounts, taxation and audit. So taxation like uh, CA Institute wanted to make the chartered accountants as supreme in terms of you know taxation as well. So, because already they were looking after the accounts and audit. So, now even in terms of taxation also, so they want to make the chartered accountants have the commanding position. So, that is the reason why lot of importance is given for income tax and indirect tax of late. Then when it comes to our subject that is paper 3, you know that in group 1 there are 3 papers, advanced accounts number 2 law and number 3 taxation. In this taxation you have two parts ok. So I am talking about the paper little bit and then we will move on to the subject etc. So your CA intermediate, CA intermediate group 1, group 1. So I am talking about paper 3. So this paper 3 has got taxation and in this taxation there are two parts income tax and GST. Income tax is for 50 marks whereas GST is for 50 marks but in the past it was not like that. This income tax was for 60 marks and GST was for 40 marks. So a student was finding it very very difficult. So because income tax they need to read because GST how much ever they may read they will not be able to get more than 40. So maximum is 40 only but to clear the group so they need to get minimum 50 because you all know that aggregate is important here. So therefore if you need to clear group 1 you need to have an aggregate of 150 marks in the total 300 marks and uh, therefore the student was finding it very difficult but now thank God. So thanks to ICI because they have made GST as 50 marks. Now strategically what you can do you can focus more on GST and uh, so compared to the volume, see with due respect to income tax subject, I am not telling that income tax subject is not important and all. Income tax subject is also important, GST is also important. You learn both, you should learn both because at CA final level you have paper you know 4 as you know this uh, direct tax and paper 5 as indirect tax. So this DT and IDT, income tax is actually direct tax and GST is indirect tax. So this will become you know 200 marks at CA final level. That is the reason why what you should do is that you should be learning the subject thoroughly at CA intermediate level and the incremental portion 
like if you see in uh, CA final direct taxes, you have international taxation. So that international taxation is extra. Same way at uh, CA final indirect taxes, you have customs and foreign trade policy. Even in GST, there are many advanced topics which are not there at intermediate level will be tested at CA final level. So both subject that is both DT as well as IDT is made in such a way. So therefore, you cannot neglect income tax and even though you are giving importance to GST, what I am trying to convey is that please study both income tax as well as GST. However, from exam point of view, for scoring purpose, you give importance to GST. Reason, the volume of income tax is so big for 50 marks, whereas the volume of GST is comparatively less for 50 marks. So that's why I'm telling you, strategically what you should do is that you should be focusing on indirect taxes, that is GST portion. So in the GST portion, for 50 marks, our target should be minimum 45. The target should be 45 out of 50. Okay. So, how much you should be targeting in uh, GST? In GST, the target should be in GST, the target should be 45 out of 50. That should be the target. Okay. And not less than that. Sir, why can't 50 out of 50? Usually, tax papers, we will not be able to get full marks. How much ever we may convince the valuer, but so they may not be satisfied with respect to few explanation based questions. If it is a problematic question, there is no issue. So valuers will be giving full marks. But when it comes to the case study based question, case study based question means situation based. So they will give one situation to that situation we need to apply a provision and you need to interpret and arrive at the answer. So you need to write the explanation. Sometimes if the explanation is not that great, so then the marks will not be awarded full. So we may lose some one or two marks. So that's why I'm telling you, you should be aiming at even that explanation part also, we will try to improve. So when you start practicing more and more questions, so that uh, art of writing the answers will come. So even I will also ensure that in the classes you are given you know enough knowledge as well as enough skill in respect of writing the answer. Presentation of the answers is a major role that it plays in CA intermediate exam. In CA exams presentation is very very important. Okay. So therefore that art we will be learning in the due course not only the subject. Now, so this 45 out of 50 in GST and income tax as the volume is big, you should definitely learn. But at the time when you are learning, don't get tense because by seeing the volume itself, you will feel like, are you this much should I learn for the sake of 50 marks like that you will be happy, happy like you will be feeling. So don't feel that way. You read, you learn that. But don't try to remember or mug up things you study happily with the objective of learning the subject but there some important chapters you can focus for examination purpose like some chapters like capital gains then uh, pgbp so deduction like that few chapters are there so those chapters you can focus so that you will be able to get easily somewhere like 25 out of 50. So that is the target there. See, I am telling you this because when you start learning the subject direct taxes, you will come to know the volume is so big, lot of provisions are there and these provisions also you will not be able to connect that much. But GST provisions you will be able to connect. Reason being, so GST is based on our real life scenario. Whatever you are seeing and surrounding you. Say you go to a movie theater, cinema theater, and in that cinema theater, you purchase some uh, food items. So therefore, what is the GST implication on that? You travel in train or you travel in bus. What is the GST implication? Like this, when we start relating it in our daily life, so easily we will be able to remember that. But income tax, and a, and a very, very difficult because only when you start doing the business or when you are engaged in those activities, then only you will be able to connect. 
So that's the reason why students will be finding it difficult to retain the information in, in case of income tax, for exam point of view, but GST will be relatively easy. That's why I'm telling you. So our target in income tax will be what? The target is 25 out of 50. So what happens total? So we are able to aim for 75, 45, so plus 25. So that is uh, no, approximately 70 marks. 70 marks should be minimum. See, I am not telling that this should be the maximum marks. No, this much minimum marks you should be able to achieve, 7 to 75. So that what will happen in advanced accounts, See, accounts is easy, but advanced accounts is not that easy because lot of accounting standards, application of the accounting standards and all is involved and some complicated topics and all are there. So, therefore, even in the old syllabus also, many students was finding it difficult to cope up with advanced accounts which was in group 2. Now, they have brought it in group 1. So, due to that reason, so my suggestion to you is that, so you will not be able to, sometimes you will be able to get 90s also. A paper is like that. Sometimes paper will be easy and the students will get 80s, 90s. Sometimes a paper will be difficult and the students may not be able to get even 50s. So like that the problem will happen. And uh, law, again, law depends upon your, uh, you know, acumen in writing the answers. Because even at foundation level, if you are direct entry, then definitely you will not be able to get that uh, art of writing. So, but foundation, definitely the foundation students will be having that because in foundation law paper is there. So, and that too it is descriptive mode. So, they know how the questions and all will be coming. So, if you are a direct entry student, you will little bit, you will find it difficult. Again, law is not a bankable subject because sometimes the papers will be easy, sometimes the papers will be difficult and because of that, the marks will fluctuate. Suppose, if the papers of advanced accounts and law is easy, no issue. You score 75 in tax and there also you are getting good marks. So, you will have a carry forward in group 2. Because in group 2, you have three papers. That is cost and management accounting, auditing and financial management and strategic management. If you see there, it is like uh, one and a half paper is practical and one and a half is theory. Auditing is theory. Even strategic management is theory. Cost and management accounting and financial management is practical. So, 150 marks practical, 150 marks theory. Whereas in group 1 if you see, so taxation is practical only and even advanced accounts practical. So, this law alone is theory. So, now you are getting more marks in group 1. Say in group 2, you are not able to get 150 and uh, you are able to get somewhere like 140 or 145. Now, there is some shortfall to get an aggregate. Now, from group 1, so there will be a carry forward benefit that will be there. So, when you are writing all 6 papers at a time also, this will be helpful. Even in group 1 also, tax paper will help in a way like Suppose if you are getting only 40s to 50s in advanced accounts and law, in taxation when you score like 60 marks, 70 marks and all, so the aggregate problem will be taken care, okay. So that's the reason, dear, what you should do is that you should focus and that two, these two papers will be coming to your CA final level, even during your articleship also, you will be definitely be working on GST and income tax domains. Okay, and therefore, when you go for the interview for the article shape, so they will be asking you definitely some questions on taxation. At that time, if you are not able to respond properly, you may lose the benefit of getting a good professional firm. Okay, so CA firm, article ship in a CA firm determines your further career. So, how much exposure that you have gained in those two years of article ship? Because in the new syllabus, new curriculum, article ship is only for two years. So, this two years of article ship is going to determine your future. So, that's the reason why a lot of students will be targeting for big force like uh, Pricewater Coopers or Deloitte uh, and uh, EY. 
so grand uh, gt like grand thornton so all these are big firms and even there are many other firms like bdo and uh, many other bsg like that lot of firms are there but in these firms reputed firms if you need to get a entry it's not that easy so but once you get a entry in these firms so after 2 years of article ship so the time when you complete your final and go to the interviews job and at that time when you mention that you have done your article ship in these places definitely your resume will have more weightage so that's the reason why choosing a proper article ship firm is very very important and after choosing it they should select you na so for selecting you you need to have a good knowledge on the subjects what is there at ca intermediate level that to particularly taxation accounts and audit so these three you should be learning like crazily okay and uh, my part is related to gst so income tax already you would have uh, purchased some lectures or you might be watching some classes etc so i will be taking care of this gst part this gst part is for 50 marks and i will ensure that you are getting the complete knowledge on the subject and the methodology in which i will be taking classes will be bear act methodology bear act methodology means so in the act in the act so there will be a like section that will be given each and every section we read line by line interpret it and analyze it okay so what we do is that every section we take first we read the section thereafter we analyze the section thereafter we apply it into illustrations okay so that's how the methodology of study will be so i will not be taking this regular batch from the summary etc and all but of course summary and all will be provided to you you will be provided with three books okay so three books number 1 resource book resource book and this resource book contains the bear act followed by analysis then illustrations assignment questions etc and this is a comprehensive book and if you are following this resource book you don't have to follow any other book of icci so you don't have to study the icci study material that i will be covering in the class itself in this book itself it is included so you don't have to refer to icci study material not at all required because you have two volumes of icci study material under new syllabus you don't have to refer that so just this resource book will be sufficient it is comprehensive it contains everything then second you will be receiving practice manual what is this practice manual all past exam questions because even though you are under new syllabus but gst is not new so from 2018 may 2018 onwards so gst was being tested to ca intermediate students so all those past exam questions rtp questions revision test paper questions mtp questions etc i have made as a compilation and even some extra questions also i have included in that so this compilation of problems and solutions and mcqs is practice manual okay even mcqs also I have included in that so like some uh, standard mcqs which will be tested in ca exams that also i have included in that practice manual so you will be receiving practice manual then number 3 that's it that's it a summary book so that will be of a pocket size you can carry with you anywhere wherever you are going and whenever uh, you wanted to revise a particular chapter you can revise that so it's a multi color book it's small book and which is of a pocket size and uh, you can keep that book till the end of the exam mainly it will help you for that uh, one day before the exam usually ca exams what they will do is that on alternate days the exams will be conducted so advance accounts then gap then law exam then one day gap and thereafter it will be tax exam so this one one and half day revision purpose so you can make use of this book okay this that's it book even before that also 
whenever one chapter is completed if you want to quickly revise that particular chapter you can take the summary book and you can start reading from the summary book and for this summary also i will be taking in the class itself so quick summary i will be doing and that quick summary i will upload it in the google drive itself so that you will be able to just listen to the quick summary keep this that's it book so that quickly whatever the chapter that we have completed it got over so therefore apart from doing the regular discussion problems and solutions of past exam also i will be covering in this batch the summary also i will be covering in this batch and this summary i will be giving as a separate folder so in that separate folder you will be able to identify the summary of each and every segment okay and uh, i'll just show you the resource book definitely you might have got it by now if not also don't worry so you can see this is the resource book on gst and uh, so this this is actually your syllabus paper 3b goods and services tax so this is your syllabus and what i did is that i just made your syllabus into 16 segments the entire portion of ca intermediate gst i have divided into 16 segments so this 16 segments along with the ica chapter reference i have given but i see chapter uh, no way like 1 2 3 i did not uh, find it uh, useful the way in which they have given the order in which they have given so that's a little bit i have modified so that it will be easy for us to connect with the subject the flow etc and all that's a little bit i have modified but i have given the reference of i see chapter also so therefore these are the 16 segments that you should be knowing okay and in these 16 segments after completion of each and every segment i am calling it as segment rather than chapter so that uh, you know ici chapter ici will be using the reference as chapter reference and i will be using the reference as segment reference okay so after completion of each and every segment in this book we will be doing the practice manual discussion in that practice manual discussion so like mcqs past exam questions and all we will see and thereafter including the ic study material questions okay so study material questions also will complete and thereafter we will also do the summary from the that's it book and that summary i will keep as a separate folder in the google drive so that whenever you want to revise quickly the chapters you can just open that folder and click on the segment you know video and you can keep your that's it book and you can listen okay that you can do so that it will be helpful for you and to quickly complete the revision because remember tax is a subject which whenever you revise it multiple times a number of times when you are making the revision so that gets registered in your mind and you will become a pro in the subject okay so therefore lot of students who really get very good marks in taxation so they will keep on revising that so this is also like uh, mathematics only where formulas you need to keep on revising otherwise what will happen so you will forget the formula if you forget the formula you will not be able to arrive at the answer just like that taxation is also the same way you have to keep on revising it as many number of times and so that in exam it will be easy for you so you will get the flow because when you see the question itself as you know the subject you revised it many times so immediately the provision will flash okay when for example there is one uh, activity so transportation of passengers by stage carriage so stage carriage means what like a bus stage carriage means a local bus which carries the passengers from one stage to another stage and they will be collecting some charges is it taxable or exempted that is the situation now as you revise it multiple times that you know it is exempted so immediately you will get the flash in your mind that this said activity will be exempted easily you will be able to write like that okay so therefore a number of times we need to revise so that's the reason why please make use of this revision also okay everything i will be doing you don't have to worry about that just you need to wholeheartedly 
listen to the lectures and follow whatever I am telling and that will be sufficient. Then, sir, how to clarify our doubts? So, we have created a telegram group and the telegram group link and all would have been shared with you. So, in the telegram group, you can join and you can post your queries and uh, whatever queries that you have. Suppose if you are unable to type your query, don't worry. So, in the telegram, so there is an option of voice recording, okay. Just share me a voice note, whatever is your query, you can record and you can share. So, I can understand. Suppose if you do not want to speak in English also, it is okay. You can record the voice note in your uh, mother tongue, either uh, Telugu or Tamil or uh, you know even uh, Hindi, any language I will be able to understand. I can respond to your query. So, do not hesitate to post your doubts. So, only when you are asking the doubts, so when and, and give me some time to clarify the doubts, I cannot clarify the doubts immediately. So, one or two days it will take for me because I will be engaged with uh, other classes, subject, etc. and all. So, that is the reason, but definitely all your queries will be resolved, okay. And uh, you can start continuing the listening to the classes. So, you post your query and your query gets rectified, uh, resolved and sometimes during the subsequent chapters also. So, what will happen? Whatever doubts that you have will get resolved, okay. That is one thing. And next thing is that, so you need to, you know, complete the portion. See, main problem with Google Drive classes is that students will be having the josh initially. In the beginning, they will have the josh. But over a span of time, what they will do is that, so automatically the learning uh, process, so they will feel like, okay, uh, procrastination. So, we will think, they will think that we will read later, we will study later, like that they will be thinking and they will be postponing. Because of postponing, what will happen? So, they will not be able to complete the portion. When you are not able to complete the portion, then how can you expect to get uh, good marks in exam, correct or not? So, that is the reason why you should wholeheartedly complete listening to these classes. Sir, how many hours the lectures will be? So, uh, as I have to cover these three, resource book, practice manual and that is it. I am planning this for approximately, approximately 90 plus hours, okay, 90. So, 90 to 95 like that, that mean number of hours the lectures will be taken and uh, therefore, you know, in detail we will be learning everything in resource book plus practice manual, past exam, problems and solutions, MCQs, okay. So, this practice manual mainly contains uh, uh, question and answers, then MCQs, whereas in this that is it, it is purely summary and this resource book contains analysis of each and every concept, then we will be having illustrations for understanding these concepts plus assignment, okay. Uh, assignment questions are also there. So, this will be coverage in the three books, okay. Then, next, uh, what I am expecting from you? So, I'm, I told you that what and all I will be doing. What is that I am expecting from you? Simple, you should wholeheartedly listen to these lectures, revise it as many number of times and we will be conducting some test series. You need to take up the test series, write the test and give it to us. We will evaluate and give. So, this if you are doing that will be sufficient, okay. And uh, I will ensure that you are getting this 45 out of 50. That is my responsibility, okay. Now, let us proceed to the subject now. I am starting with the first chapter that is introduction to GST. And, uh, and one more aspect also I wanted to discuss with you. Sir, I am appearing for May exam, May 2024 exam. Should I refer to any amendments in addition to whatever you are uh, discussing? I told you, you do not have to refer anything else. Everything I will discuss in the classes itself. Even the information not there in your study material also, I have included in my resource book. I will tell you the reason. 
you are appearing for which attempt may 2024 if you are appearing for may 2024 remember 6 months before your exam attempt 6 months before your exam attempt 6 months before your exam attempt is what so that is a uh, 31st october 2023 all amendments up to 31st october 2023 all changes that happens to the law up to 31st october 2023 will be applicable for your may 24 exams okay suppose if you are appearing for november 24 exam say some of you might have purchased this lectures and appearing for november 24 exam even then this batch will be suitable for you and all amendments up to 6 months before the exam attempt what is that up to 30th april 2024 so this will be applicable for your november 24 exam okay and both attempts is based on the finance act finance act will be introduced in the budget every year that contains the changes to the law every year the union finance minister will be releasing the finance act in the budget so that finance act will be applicable for your exam so the recent finance act that was presented is finance act 2023 finance act 2023 is applicable for your may 24 and november 24 exam whereas for 25 may 25 november 25 exam it will be finance act 2024 okay so right now for your exam it is finance act 2023 plus all amendments that happens up to 31st october 2023 whereas you know your icse study material was released in the month of august but in this batch whatever amendments that are there even after august month which is not there in your study material will also be included into our discussion what ca institute will do is that they will be releasing a supplementary study paper that supplementary study paper they will be giving somewhere like 3 months or 4 months before the exam they will be giving that but you don't have to wait until that point of time also so this batch covers entirely all those amendments as well whereas if you are appearing for november 24 exam so majorly the finance act and all amendments up to 31st october 2023 are included now these amendments whatever is there between 31st october 2023 and 30th april 2024 you know not much amendment some 5% to 10% changes could be there so that i will be uploading as a amendments video in my youtube channel okay so this because this we will know only at a later point of time so it will be there as a amendments video amendments video so even i will upload it in the google drive as well as i will be uploading in my youtube channel so my youtube channel is tarun's brainery youtube channel you just search for tarun's brainery in youtube you will be able to identify my channel and you can subscribe to that and whatever videos that i am posting in the channel you will be able to get the update and you can start watching that so rtps mtps this amendments some uh, important concepts etc and all from time to time i will be uploading in uh, my youtube channel you can subscribe to that and you will be able to get the update okay so this amendments the two if you are appearing for november 24 this extra amendments alone you need to cover apart from this batch otherwise for may 24 this batch itself will be sufficient okay now you can see in this first chapter so therefore the entire discussion is based on finance act 2023 as well as the various amendments or what are these amendments means amendments means usually whenever uh, a law comes into an existence so how an act comes into existence that we need to understand so we are into the introduction to the gst but gst is also a law and any law in india so there is a process how a law will come into existence that process you need to know first 
you know the president of india has got three organs below him what are they legislative organ executive organ and judiciary organ who will be there in legislative organ the mps whom we have elected people representatives they will be into the legislative organ so that is parliament and the uh, party that is the majority party that is whichever party is having majority candidates majority of the people representatives they will form a government and that is called as executive organ so executive organ is not parliament parliament is legislative organ executive organ is government with the cabinet of ministers so now this government will implement the law what legislative organ will do legislative organ will make the law whereas executive organ will implement the law then what is judiciary organ will do judiciary organ if there is any disputes between the people and the executive organ during the implementation of the law the disputes will be resolved by the judiciary organ okay so that is the connect between you know the three organs that we have so what is that i told you so president of india president of india and below president of india we have three organs legislative legislative organ then executive organ executive organ and judiciary organ legislative organ means what parliament parliament both the houses lok sabha rajya sabha and executive organ is government government that is the people representatives they form a government so that will be coming under executive organ and judiciary organ is courts courts are tribunals courts or tribunals are called as judiciary organ so who will make a law so legislative organ will make law make laws and whatever law that is made by the legislative organ will be implemented by the executive organ implement laws now during this implementation if there is any dispute so then that settlement of disputes will be done by the judiciary organ settlement of disputes in implementation of law so whenever during the implementation between the taxpayer or between the public and the government if there is any dispute so judiciary organ will come for the rescue that's how we have now here uh, law means what every law will have a act okay so first what is the process of making this law why why there is a need of making a law there will be some issue and uh, that issue there needs to be a solution for the sake of that solution they will be creating a law okay for example lot of people are earning money and now government wanted to collect the taxes just like that they cannot collect the tax na so they need to create a law for that so that law for that law they will create a act okay whereas act will not contain the uh, way of collecting the taxes or uh, the procedures etc act will not have so that information will be there in the rules so act will contain the provisions so for example let's take a situation what is the issue here the issue is lot of ca students are there who are not getting good marks so they are putting lot of effort and they are writing the exams but they are not getting good marks in the exam so they wanted justice okay now all the ca students will make a protest before the icai 
when they make protest before the ICI, ICI will say that we can't do anything with respect to that. So now even the protest become bigger. Now government is interfering and now the government is appointing one committee. That committee will say, like that committee will do the research and that committee will take the opinion from all the students and thereafter they will make some suggestions to the government. Government here means what? Appropriate ministry. So who is appropriate ministry in this example? Ministry of Human Resource and Development. For tax related information it is Ministry of Finance like that. So depending upon the issue that particular ministry will be responsible. So now what that ministry will do? So it will appoint a committee and that committee will examine what are the issues which are faced by the people and they will give some suggestions or recommendations to the government. Now government that is the appropriate ministry they will prepare a draft. They will prepare a draft based on the suggestions and they will release this draft in the parliament as a bill. Okay. Say for example, one bill needs to be presented. So here we this bill is Posca bill. What is Posca bill 2023? Posca protection of students of chartered accountancy bill. 2023 it is presented in the parliament okay when it is presented in the parliament so the discussion will happen in both the houses Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha wherein you no know, the member of parliament will have some opinions or difference of opinions etc the discussion will happen finally this bill will be approved in the parliament once it is approved in the parliament so the president will sign the bill, the day when president assents the bill, it is known as act. So it will become POSCA Act 2023. Okay. Now, now this POSCA Act 2023, so there will be some provisions. Usually section 1 will be this act is known as the full form of that act. Protection of Students of Chartered Accountancy Act 2023 and the applicability. So, it is applicable across the country including the state of Jammu and Kashmir that will be there in section 1. Okay, Short title and applicability. Always every law will have this uniformity. Section 2 contains definitions. All definitions will be there in section 2. Section 3, so we will start with some uh, provision which says notwithstanding anything contrary contained in any law, every CA student who is not satisfied with the evaluation done by CA institute can make an application for verification of the examination papers to the government like that you know they will create a provision where in section 3. Now how to make the application? and what is the accompanying documents and who are required to make application all these are procedures that is not there in act so that information will be there in rules who will make the rules the rules are made by the executive organ okay so post car rules post car rules 2023 okay so therefore first act will contain the provisions whereas rules contains what procedure to carry out the provisions understood so what does act contains act contains the provisions so act contains contains provisions contains provisions whereas rules rules contain what contains the procedure to carry out the provisions contains procedure procedure to carry out to carry out provisions okay that is about rules and then we have uh, something called as notifications what is this notifications from time to time there could be some changes that are required in the law so in the law there is a change that is required like not every student is required to make an application. So, a student whose marks 
is less than the pass mark, he can make an application like that they want to modify. Initially at the time when they created the provision, they did not think about it. But now they want to make some change to this. So, the changes to the law will be given in the form of notifications. Okay. So, that will be called as notifications. Notifications. What are notifications? Basically, changes in act or rules will be given by way of notifications. Changes in act or rules, changes in act or rules will be given by way of notifications. Then there is something called as circulars. What is the need of the circulars? Like a particular provision may not be interpreted properly. So, there is a difference in, in interpretation. I can interpret in one way, you can interpret in one way. So, whenever there is a conflict in interpretation, to clarify what is the intention of the government, they will be giving a circular. Okay. So, circulars are basically clarifications. Circulars are basically clarifications, clarifications with respect to act or rules. Okay. For example, say this. There is one uh, provision, Mr. A, there is one sentence, okay. So, I am just giving you a general example. I do not want to go into the subject and give, I am just giving you some general examples. Mr. A and Mr. B love a girl. This is the sentence. In this sentence, there are multiple interpretations that are possible. Interpretation number one, Mr. A and Mr. B love the same girl. We can understand that way. Mr. A and Mr. B love the same girl. That is one understanding, one way. Another way, Mr. A is there and Mr. B is loving a girl. Mr. A is not. Mr. A is there. And Mr. B is loving a girl, second interpretation. Mr. A and Mr. B love a girl, but that girl may not be the same girl, may be a different girl. Mr. A also loves a girl, Mr. B also loves a girl, and that girl need not be the same girl, third interpretation. Now, what is the intention of the lawmaker? So, to clarify that intention of the lawmaker, because three different interpretations are there, but what is the lawmaker? That is the one who created the law. So, what is his intention? So, why he wrote this? So, that will be by way of a clarification. So, say I am the lawmaker, I mean to say that both Mr. A and Mr. B loves the same girl. So, that is what I mean to say. So, that is what I have written here. So, that I will give as a circular. Understood? So, whenever there is a difference in interpretation between the parties, so, then to clarify that, so circulars will be given. Okay. Next. So, then what will happen when they implement? I told you already, during the stage of implementation of the law, if there is any dispute between the parties, dispute between the government and the taxpayer, so that dispute will be resolved by whom? By the judiciary organ. So, the judiciary organ will be giving some decisions so for the issue. So, those decisions are called as case laws. Those decisions are called as case laws. Okay. So, these case laws are decisions by judiciary. So, judiciary will be giving various decisions. So, those decisions are called as case laws. So, if you want to understand any law in this country completely, you need to know this. What is that you need to know? You need to know the act, you need to know the rules, you need to know the notifications, circulars and case laws. Only then the law is complete. Okay. So, even GST law also we have all these things, income tax law also we have all these things, companies act also we have all these things. Okay. But any law in India 
will be complete only with this. So, these are the various sources of a particular law. Okay. So, now this is what I have given in the introduction chapter. So, precedent in the next page you can see. So, page number 2. Page number 2 you can see. President of India is the head of the state and the state has three organs. Legislative organ, parliament which will enact the law. Executive organ, so a council of ministers headed by prime minister which will implement the law. And judiciary organ, judiciary organ like supreme court or high court etc. which will interpret the law. Okay. Now, how an act comes into existence? I told you first there will be an issue. What is that? CA students are having lot of uh, you know uh, issues with respect to CA institute issue is there then appointment of a committee then committee will give recommendations thereafter a bill will be prepared and that bill will be presented in the parliament and discussion will happen in both the houses then bill will be passed with majority then it will be sent to the president for assent and the day when president assents the bill so, then it will become act. Okay. So, this is the information I have given and I also explain what is the meaning of act, what is the meaning of rules, what is the meaning of notification, circulars and case laws. Okay. Do not worry that uh, this handwritten notes and all whatever I am writing, this handwritten notes and all will be uploaded in the Google Drive. So, lecture notes like that one folder will be there. In that lecture notes folder, all these notes will be whatever I am writing, handwritten notes, it will be uploaded in that. And uh, what you need to do is that apart from these three books, you need to maintain one small notebook. And in that notebook, if I am giving any extra information, like some problems, solutions I have not given, that solutions or some extra information and all, you try to write in that notebook. Okay. Now, we are trying to look into what is the meaning of tax? and what are the various uh, indirect taxes that we had in the past and how GST is formed etc. What is the purpose of tax? Tax is a major source of revenue to the government to meet the public expenditure. So, today government is spending lot of money for the welfare of the public. So, lot of freebies are given and construction of roads and construction of uh, you know, dams, projects, irrigation projects, power projects, what not. So, there is a lot of expenditure that is incurred by the government. Of course, some governments are also engaged in giving freebies to the people and make them lazy. That is also there. But these are all basically public expenditure. But for the public expenditure, some revenue should be generated by the government. Now. So, what is the major source of revenue to the government? That is tax. So, tax is a major source of revenue to meet public expenditure. So, this tax is divided into direct tax and indirect tax. So, what is the difference between direct tax and indirect tax? Basically, in case of direct tax, the one who is paying the tax has to bear the burden of tax. But in case of indirect tax, the person who pays the tax can transfer the burden to the next person like the though burden can be transferred to the ultimate consumer. So, that is the basic difference between direct and indirect tax. For example, you know, if I am collecting some income tax from you, now you will have the burden of the income tax. But when I am collecting the indirect tax from you, in turn you will be passing on that to the next person. So, that say if you are a manufacturer, so you will pass on that burden to the wholesaler. Wholesaler will pass on the burden to the retailer. Retailer will pass on the burden to the ultimate consumer. So, who will have the burden of indirect taxes? The ultimate consumer will have the burden of indirect taxes. Okay. So, this indirect taxes, we had various indirect taxes in the past like excise duty, customs duty, service tax, central sales tax, value added tax and even many indirect taxes levied by the state government. So, all these indirect taxes which were levied in the past got subsumed into GST. So, now we need to understand how GST is formed. Is GST a new tax? No. Actually, GST is not a new tax. We had various indirect taxes in the past, subsuming all those indirect taxes. Subsuming means what? Merging those indirect taxes, they have created, you know, GST. Now, let us take the indirect taxes which were levied by the central government. 
so central government used to levy few indirect taxes and state government used to levy few indirect taxes now first i am taking the indirect taxes levied by the central government so in that if you see you know excise duty customs duty service tax and central sales tax are the four indirect taxes which were levied by the central government levy means what imposing okay now all indirect taxes will be event based taxation event based taxation means on happening of an event so the tax payment shall arise that is known as event based taxation okay so excise duty what is the event manufacture so whenever we used to manufacture goods we were paying something called as excise duty on goods manufactured in india and customs duty on goods imported or exported service tax on services provision of service on providing the services and central sales tax on interstate sale of goods from one state to another state like this these four indirect taxes was levied by central government depending upon a particular event so these duties or taxes was levied and in that central sales tax has got a peculiarity central sales tax was levied by central government but collected and retained by the state government so the power to levy the tax was with central government which one central sales tax but ultimately it will be collected and retained by whom by the state government you can see that central sales tax levied by central government on interstate sale so that is from one state to another but collected by the state government okay so that is about central sales tax now we understood that there were four indirect taxes in the past levied by central government that is excise duty on manufacture of goods customs duty on import or export of goods service tax on providing services central sales tax on interstate sale and central sales tax even though levied by central government but collected and retained by state government in these four indirect taxes except customs duty except customs duty all other indirect taxes levied by central government got subsumed into gst so how gst is formed first point what you need to remember all indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty got subsumed into gst okay that's the first point then next in customs duty we used to have some additional customs duty what were those additional customs duty countervailing duty and special additional duty countervailing duty and special additional duty what is the purpose of this countervailing duty and special additional duty let's try to understand this with an example that is there are two parties so mr arvind is one person and mr ganesh is another person okay now what mr arvind did and this is before 17 2017 why before 17 2017 because gst law is implemented in india with effect from 1 july 2017 so whatever discussion that i am making now was before 17 2017 okay so before 17 2017 Mr Arvind was importing a smartphone importing smartphone whereas Mr Ganesh was purchasing a smartphone manufactured in India so purchase smartphone purchase smartphone manufactured in india manufactured in india now let's see what will be the tax or duty burden on them so on mr arvind there will be only one burden what is that customs duty customs duty on smartphone customs duty on smartphone because he is importing na what is the taxable event for customs import of goods but ganesh is purchasing a smartphone which is manufactured in india which means so first of all that smartphone to manufacture 
some raw material will be imported. So, on that raw material imported, so the manufacturer will pay customs duty. In turn, that customs duty will be recovered from Mr. Ganesh by indirect taxes. In case of indirect taxes, the one who pays the tax will in turn recover it from the next person. So, what is the burden? First burden on Ganesh that is customs duty on raw material. Okay. Then the manufacturer will make the smartphone. When the manufacturer makes the smartphone, the manufacturer is required to pay excise duty. So, that excise duty will also be recovered from Mr. Ganesh. So, excise duty, excise duty on smartphone. Now, that smartphone has been sold to Mr. Ganesh. Na. That smartphone has been sold to Mr. Ganesh. Means at the time of sale, so sales tax will be levied and that will be also recovered from Mr. Ganesh. So, therefore, sales tax on smartphone, sales tax on smartphone. Now, these are the three levies on Mr. Ganesh, that is the manufacturer who imported the parts for making the smartphone will pay the customs duty, in turn recover it from Mr. Ganesh, that is the first burden. Second burden, excise duty will be payable by the manufacturer on manufacture of smartphone that will also be recovered from Mr. Ganesh. Then sales tax which is payable by the manufacturer will be recovered from Mr. Ganesh. Now, who will be having more burden, Mr. Aravind or Mr. Ganesh? Mr. Ganesh will have more burden, not Mr. Aravind. Because if you see the total burden, so on Aravind only one that is customs duty on smartphone. Whereas on Ganesh, customs duty on raw material, excise duty on smartphone and sales tax on smartphone. So, who is having more burden on Mr. Ganesh? Which means, what will happen because of this? Whether the imports will increase or not? Yes, because indirectly, government is encouraging import than locally manufactured goods. But that is not the intention of the government. So, the government's intention is to encourage locally manufactured goods rather than imports. So, now you as a finance minister, what you will do? You have two options. Option number one, eliminate this excise duty on smartphone and sales tax on smartphone so that the customs duty on smartphone and customs duty on raw material, definitely customs duty on raw material will be less. So, therefore, import will be having more burden than the local purchase. So, people will go for local purchase. But what is the disadvantage in this option? So, the revenue to the government will come down. So, government do not want to do that. So, therefore, what government will do? They will try to add the excise duty. So, this is not the correct option. So, then what is the correct option? So, this customs duty, excise duty and sales tax needs to be retained. And here we will add excise duty and sales tax. So, that where the burden will be high, the burden will be high on Mr. Arvind and means import will have more burden than local purchase. So, this is what government has resorted. So, what government did? They have levied excise duty and sales tax, but excise duty cannot be levied on goods manufactured outside India. On goods manufactured in India, only excise duty can be levied. But where was this smartphone manufactured outside India? So, excise duty cannot be levied. So, for that, they created a duplicate for this excise duty. They created a duplicate called as countervailing duty. CVD, countervailing duty to counterbalance excise duty, countervailing duty to counterbalance, to counterbalance excise duty, they have levied CVD and sales tax also cannot be levied on imported goods. So, only on locally sold goods sales tax can be levied. So, to counterbalance that sales tax, they have levied something called as SAD, SAD to counterbalance, to counterbalance sales tax, okay. Now, so what is CVD full form? Countervailing duty. SAD full form is what? Special additional duty, okay. Now, listen, 
with effect from 1-7-2017, whether excise duty got subsumed into GST? Yes, because what was the first point I told you? All indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty got subsumed into GST. So, this excise duty and sales tax got subsumed into GST. Yes, so with effect from with effect from 1-7-2017, with effect from 1-7-2017, if you see, so this excise duty, excise duty and sales tax, this excise duty and sales tax, these two got subsumed into GST, correct? These two got subsumed into GST. As these two got subsumed into GST, so CVD is to counterbalance excise duty. CVD is actually a duplicate of excise duty. SAD is a duplicate of sales tax. So, this CVD and SAD also got subsumed into GST. Okay. So, even CVD and SAD got subsumed into GST. So, tell me, so how GST formed? What is the first point you need to remember? All indirect taxes levied by central government in the past except customs duty but including CVD and SAD under customs got subsumed into GST. That is the first point you need to remember. So, you can see here in page number 5, in page number 5, taxes subsumed into GST. So, all indirect taxes levied by central government in the past. What are the indirect taxes levied by central government in the past? So, excise duty, service tax, sales tax. So, all indirect taxes levied by central government in the past except customs duty, but including CVD and SAD got subsumed into GST. Then what about uh, state government indirect taxes, specified indirect taxes levied by the state government. What were the specified indirect taxes? Total 6. That is value added tax, purchase tax, tax on lottery, betting, gambling, entertainment tax, luxury tax and advertisement tax. These six indirect taxes levied by state government in the past got subsumed into GST. When this was levied, so value added tax was levied on intrastate sale. On interstate sale, we had central sales tax. On intrastate sale, we had value added tax. So, that value added tax got subsumed into GST. Purchase tax, also known as octroi. So, whenever we are making purchase from another state to our state, so some tax will be collected that is called as purchase tax octroi, even that also got subsumed into GST. Then tax on lottery, betting and gambling. I am not talking about income tax, I am talking about indirect tax in the past on winning from lotteries, betting, horse races and all, state government used to collect some taxes that also got subsumed into GST. Then entertainment tax, entertainment tax was levied on cinema theatres, movie artists, then serial actors, then on DTH, cable TV operators, they used to levy entertainment tax, who? State government. So, that also got subsumed into GST. Then luxury tax, luxury tax was levied by state government on the hotels. So, on 3 star, 4 star, 5 star hotels and all, they used to levy luxury tax. That luxury tax also got subsumed into GST. Then advertisement tax. So, there will be some big, big hoardings we keep now on the roadside. So, for keeping that hoardings, for placing those hoardings, some advertisement tax was levied by the state government that also got subsumed into GST. So, these are the six levies of state government, indirect tax levies of state government that got subsumed into GST. So, what is that list you need to remember? Number one, value added tax, purchase tax, then tax on lottery betting gambling, advertisement tax, entertainment tax and luxury tax. Other indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into GST. What are the other indirect taxes levied by state government? So, we have something called as stamp duty on sale of property. So, whenever we sell the property, immobile property, land, building and all, so there used to be something called as stamp duty. So, that stamp duty, so is not subsumed into GST. Then uh, even we have something called as property tax. So, then uh, local body tax in Maharashtra, 
then mandi tax which is levied in karnataka so there are various other indirect taxes levied by the local authorities as well as by the state government not got subsumed into gst even local authorities also will have power to levy tax for example entertainment tax today even though entertainment tax you see here is subsumed into gst but this entertainment tax which was levied by the state government got subsumed into gst but entertainment tax even today after implementation of gst is levied by local authorities on cinema theaters that is not subsumed into gst okay so therefore what is that you need to remember three points you need to remember point number 1 all indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty but including cvd and sad got subsumed into gst then number 2 specified indirect taxes levied by the state government what is that so the six specified indirect taxes levied by the state government got subsumed into gst and other indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into gst then all indirect taxes levied by local authority not got subsumed into gst so you can see the footnote below this page customs duty is not part of gst but additional customs duties like cvd to counterbalance excise duty already i told you what is cvd to counterbalance excise duty and sad to counterbalance sales tax are farming part of gst also entertainment tax levied by local bodies are outside the purview of gst okay so that's how gst is formed okay so gst is not a new tax but by subsuming various old indirect taxes they have created gst then next whether the gst is a single tax model or a dual tax model what is a single tax model versus dual tax model if only one government is collecting the tax see in india we have central government as well as state government na only one government collecting the tax is known as single tax model example income tax is a single tax model income tax who will collect central government only will collect state governments will not collect any income tax central government only will collect so that is a single tax model but gst is not a single tax model gst is a dual tax model wherein central government also will collect and state government also will collect why gst is made as a dual tax model because see state governments also require revenue to meet their expenses because india is a federal country what is the meaning of a federal country where the powers are divided between the central government and the state government and central government is required to do certain activities state government is required to do certain activities and they both have certain powers demarcation of powers so now whenever state government is required to do certain activities they need money na for the reason so income tax allocation will be there to the state government but the income tax allocation to which state government how much needs to be allocated is a decision taken by the central government but that particular decision may be biased may be for some states they may give more revenue some states they will give less revenue then even gst also if it goes that way then states which are not having central government as their ruling for example tamil nadu or andhra pradesh telangana kerala karnataka etc so where the ruling government may not have the government in a state so then they may not give the money that's the reason why for functioning of the state some money is required that's why gst is made as a dual model so therefore india is having what type of uh, gst model dual gst model you can see that in the same page so dual gst model what is dual gst model levy of gst simultaneously by center and states on the common tax base that is known as dual gst model what is dual gst model levy of gst simultaneously by center and state on the common tax base is known as dual gst model for example you go to a restaurant you eat food for 500 rupees on that 500 rupees 2.5% will be levied as cgst and 2.5% will be levied as sgst so that is what common tax base is 500 on that 500 rupees 2.5% central government will levy and 2.5% state government will levy that is known as dual gst model and dual gst is required in india 
as India is a federal country where both center and states have been assigned the powers to levy and collect tax through appropriate legislation. So, a DOGST is designed keeping in mind the constitutional requirement of fiscal federalism and actually this dual GST model is adopted by India from you know, Brazil and Canada actually. So, this model was adopted dual GST model, dual GST model was adopted from Brazil and Canada. Okay. So, this dual GST model is not something which we only created. So, it was already there in Brazil and Canada and we have adopted the dual GST model from Brazil and Canada. Okay. So, that is with respect to dual GST model. So, what is that we have seen so far? How GST is formed and what is the type of model of GST that we have in India.